Alright, so what's up people? This is Shimmy from The Shimmy Show. Welcome back. I'm going to do a show about my pops. I, I very rarely talk about my dad. And uh, that's for a good reason. Because he's a man shrouded in mystery. And a, lo a lot of things I've had to dig up on my own. Because he is um, himself very secretive and doesn't like uh, volunteer any information to me. And I think that's really weird with uh, me being his only son, supposedly. So... I'm going to have to draw a few conclusions on my own to better yet um, help figure my own self out, right? Because if you don't have any instruction or guidance or very little, you know, vague background information about your parents, it's like you're missing a couple pages from your owner's manual, actually a couple of chapters, right? So I'm going to try to draw a few conclusions here and uh, figure out what's going on here, all right? Now, my pops, he's from Ethiopia. He's from Addis. He, he shares the same name as me. I'm the junior. I'm the junior Shimmy. He's the senior Shimmy. Except for he doesn't call himself Shimmy. He's just Shimelis, whatever, right? Or Shimelis, however you want to pronounce it. Now, um, as far as I know, he immigrated to USA along with the rest of his family in the 70s uh, during the uh, regime fall of Haile Selassie also known as Rasta, Rastafari in uh, Ethiopia. For those of you who don't know, Jamaicans, for instance, they actually worship, worship this guy, the, the 1970s whatever emperor of Ethiopia. They view him as being God on earth or whatever, literally. Like they think he's fucking God, a little short African man who looks like me, basically, <laughs> to a degree, a light-skinned, more light-skinned, slightly more curly-haired version of uh, me or whatever, right? And Haile Selassie actually flew to Jamaica, and he told the Jamaican people there, who are very dark, like, hey, I'm not God, don't worship me, whatever, whatever. The video's on YouTube of him arriving at the airport, if you guys don't believe me or whatever. But yeah, so when, when you hear Bob Marley and uh, Gregory Isaacs and Peter Tosh and all these guys talk about his his imperial majesty, Jarastafari, H-I-M, stands for his imperial majesty, H-I-M, Haile Selassie, Jarastafari, and all the reggae music, that's who the man they're talking about, the king emperor of Ethiopia in the 70s. And people view, people view Selassie as like, you know, literally, the, you know, he's, he was ruled as an absolute monarch, meaning like he's the king, you know, and shit, and, you know, they, they credit him with modernizing the country and this and that and the other, and not letting the fucking uh, Italians and other crackers colonize it from Europe. Ethiopia is actually the only nation in Africa that's never been colonized by Europeans, with the exception of, like, the Italians uh, after they... They came and they came and they were defeated in some at some point and uh, they came back like five or six years later and fucking conquered the country but they didn't last for long you know and the niggas took it back they cooed them over kicked their ass out of the country they, they, their rule didn't last for very long at all and they were totally fucking exiled or whatever right so Ethiopia is a nation uh, of of pride of strong fighters of strong resistance of uh whatever 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 there were no slaves taken in ethiopia basically <laughs> right and niggas would cut your fucking head off so you know and they're they're not much different than somalians or whatever when you guys look on the news and hear about somalian pirates and just you know these guys with huge fucking balls that'll go and hijack a whole fucking oil tanker full of like, you know, freight tankers or whatever in the Gulf of Aden just in a, with a little fucking dinghy raft and a Kalishnikov rifle or whatever. These niggas have huge fucking balls. This is the kind of stuff that I do on like uh, Grand Theft Auto V, the video game, except for they do it in real life and they look just like me or whatever, right? So those are my roots, the fucking East African pirate slash monarchy slash whatever, whatever, a very very proud heritage or whatever, right? Mixed with my mom's side, black American heritage or whatever, right? Now, my dad wasn't actually, they're not, a, I'm not actually royalty or no shit like that or whatever, but they were somehow, from what I understand, my grandfather, my Ethiopian grandfather who's no longer living, um, he somehow worked for the government or whatever during 
during their regime or something, or something, something like post office job or some shit like that or whatever. But anyway, they fled the country in the 70s after um, um, the, the coup of whatever, of Selassie. You know, they, they, they killed him, basically, smothered him, so I read in the history or whatever. And uh, basically the way it works in Africa, in most of Africa, is like is if, you, if you're from... If, you, if you're from the royal family, royal government, have any kind of government job or any kind of connection or whatever, they literally clean shop and clean house, meaning any lineage, any employee, any anyone connected to the previous regime, you know, they're chopping heads unless you get the fuck out of Dodge, right? So from what I'm gathering, my family, my African side of the family fled to America. A lot of them fled to London, as I'm looking at some of them are on Instagram and this and that and whatever. A lot of them fled to Washington, D.C. or San Francisco or whatever. And there's a little few pockets of them in, like, Minnesota for some odd reason where it's cold as fuck. But anyway, um, they fled to California. And that's where my parents met and supposedly in school or something at the same university I went to. SFSU or whatever, right? So that's where I was born. That's where I was, you know, the era I was conceived in. And that's how they met up or some shit, right? Now, aside that from the point, fast forward to 40 years later, <laughs> I'm shimmy from the shimmy show. I want to, I like, I was like, I want answers. I, I want answers or whatever, right? And I'm not getting them. I'm having to rely on Google and history and pictures and piece together this vague, thing where my pops like wants to dance around questions or just not give me the knowledge that I'm requesting right so I'm going to title this show basically sins sins of my father right because I, I talk enough about my mom and my black side of the family and you often hear me ranting about black people and niggers ain't shit etc 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 well you know I feel the same way about Ethiopians too basically you know i'm not exactly accepted in the ethiopian community i don't have any ethiopian friends you know what i'm saying the few uh ethio eretrians or whatever same shit basically but the few ethiopians and eretrians i knew in high school they they weren't like tight with me they you know i was never fully accepted because i'm basically a half breed and they're other than my own kids there are i have yet to meet another half black half ethiopian on walking the face of the earth if you are one please talk below in the comments i would like to speak with you but generally ethiopians do not co-mingle with black americans african americans black people colored people negroes whatever so uh i'm a unique creation that's why i look so fucking weird or or whatever or i have uh uncommon facial and body features or whatever i'm like a I'm like a hybrid, long-distance sprinter, taxi driver, porn star, whatever, brainiac kind of guy or whatever, right? With a megalomaniac type of, you know, world domination, you know, Somali pirate philosophy or whatever, right? Because we are, we basically are the culmination of what our parents are and what we train our brains to do. You know what I'm saying? But as far as our genetic roots or whatever, I mean, you can't really deny what your genes are or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is, man. So, you know, I, I just, this is, again, this is a show about the African side of the family or whatever, right? Now, my pops looks a little bit like me. He looks very much so like me, except for he's a little bit shorter. We kind of have the same frame or whatever. You know, we're both basically like, sm you know, small, small, hairy black guys with curly hair and whatever, except for um, homeboy. He still he has this Ned Flanders kind of mustache and he just he's going for the old grandpa kind of look. You know what I'm saying? And I've told him on multiple occasions, like, dude, you know, why don't you get a box of hair dye and, you know, you look 10, 15 years younger if you do this, shave the mustache, whatever. But, you know. It's people's lives and people's bodies. I'm not them and whatever, but my logic has always been, who the fuck wants to look like an old gray-haired man? What are you doing, man? Like, what the fuck? You know, you think your girlfriend likes that shit? Come on, give me a break, right? But anyway, I'm not talking about physical appearances or whatever and all that shit. It's, uh, this episode is just about a lot of unanswered questions that I have, right? Now, my parents, to the best of my knowledge, um, they split up when I was like, literally a year old or less than a year or two old or something like that they were they were married or whatever they got married in vegas or reno nevada or some shit like that i got the wedding picture on my instagram or whatever to prove it 
mama looks happy, daddy looks happy, whatever. But as everybody knows, marriage is a social construct and most don't last for more than 70 years or a decade. I myself, my marriage, I, I, I could only bear it for seven years or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It, it's, uh, and that's actually fairly normal. You know what I'm saying? But my parents didn't even make it for like a fucking year or whatever. And I realized a lot of it was probably due to my mom's like, you know, femdom, feminist kind of training or programming that she got from being in California amongst all the fucking bra burners and all the quote unquote women's rights peoples or whatever in the 70s. You know, basically, basically entitled white women talking about their being oppressed by men and shit like that, the man hater crowd or whatever. So my mom kind of has the programming of basically a feminist man hater type of lesbian or whatever. And it's, in hindsight, I can see that it's really difficult to keep a man or whatever around like that. I, I ended up marrying a woman basically just like that. Another self-proclaimed type of feminist, fine dom, fin dom, whatever, bitch, user of men, basically. You know what I'm saying? They views men as utilities that are disposable or whatever. And you can't never really have an equitable relationship if you go into it with that mindset or whatever. So I do kind of understand that. I'm not, uh, I'm not blaming their divorce or split up or, you know, whatever, anything like that. But I mean, it's hard to maintain a, I would say any kind of healthy human relationship. If you have that kind of mindset where you're, you're owed something or men shouldn't be doing this, or you don't want to submit to this, or you don't really necessarily want to be a wife in, in the same light that he might want you to be a wife or whatever. So I will say that in his defense or whatever, but, uh, in criticizing my father now, I didn't meet him until I was 15 years old, right? And it's not like he moved back to fucking Africa or whatever. Both my parents, I, I grew up in East Oakland. My mom and dad both live in East Oakland. We literally lived like fucking 10 minutes away from each other, right? So when I start seeing him at age 15, you know, I guess he's getting hit up for some child support finally or whatever, right? So he wants to have visitation and shit like that and whatever, whatever. And uh, one of my first questions to him was like, um, <clears throat> this is before the internet, obviously, but like, um, dude, uh, why didn't you like try to come and see me? Or why didn't you send me a fucking birthday card or some fucking Transformers or Ninja Turtles or video games or a Nintendo shit or something? Just something, nigga, to let me know that you're alive and you care. Right. And I just kind of got like dead end questions like that. Like the nigga actually worked for the post office for 40 years. You can't tell me you couldn't have looked up my mom's address, this and that and whatever, if you wanted to. She couldn't have been that much of a bitch. Right. You know what I'm saying? Towards him, whatever kind of ill will he fostered, in my opinion, he still should have sought me out and tried to be like, hey, it's, you know, he's my son. Let me get him a fucking birthday cake or let him send me a photo. I didn't even see a photo of the man, a recent one, until I was 15 years old, right? So I grew up telling everybody I didn't have a dad. I was going by my middle name Godwin all the time in school. I even write my name Shem Godwin, not Shem Macbeth or whatever legal name and this and that and the other. I'm just identifying with the black side of my family. Like I, I was pretty much raised to think that I was, you know, I didn't have a dad like Jesus fucking Christ or whatever. And probably the Baptist programming of my mom had a lot to do with that too. That whole, the whole 1970s feminist feminism first wave shit or whatever, women's rights I should say. I'm sorry, <laughs> you know, is like um, they're they're on this shit. I don't need a man. I'm strong, independent, this, that, and the other. But thinking about it, my mom did have two parents growing up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what black man ever oppressed? my mom is what I wonder. Why would she have a, such a negative view of, you know, this men ain't shit kind of thing going on? I really don't know. But, you know, relationships, human relationships are complicated. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what they were going through, but it sounds to me like it was a lot of, a lot, uh, both of them have a lot of fucking growing up to do. To this day, they st I, I still think a lot of them have a lot growing up, a lot of a lot of personality disorders, a lot of childhood unresolved issues or whatever, but both, the fact remains, both of my parents grew up in a two-parent household. So what the fuck makes you think that I should grow up in a single-parent household? And I'll say this to my ex-wife in Canada too. What the fuck makes you think that you can like be almighty and you have the mental and physical capacity 
to give that child all that they need from just you when the other half is missing. What the actual fuck? You know what I'm saying? Children are not just a direct clone of you. Children are a 50-50, 60-40-ish split of chromosomes of two people. So for you to deny that other half is like fucking retarded. You're like stunting the growth by unimaginable ways by denying somebody their, their biological parent in their life. Like, what are you thinking? You know, it doesn't matter how much nurturing, how many video games and books you buy them, how many times you take them to the park or whatever. They need to hear their parents' voice and see them in this, that, and the other, right? And not just in the teenage years, maybe more so as they get older in this, that, and the other, but I don't think that many single mothers realize the crippling and devastating effects they have on their sons and daughters just because they have unresolved hate issues with their old partner. That's really, really fucked, you know what I'm saying? It's fucked in my own kid's case, it was fucked in my case, but amazingly, my parents had fucking two parents. So what the actual fuck? Whatever kind of like haterism shit, some bad relationship shit, they, need, they just needed to cross that bridge, right? So I do criticize both my parents for that, but um, more so, I criticize my dad for just not making an effort or whatever to reach out. I don't care what the fuck my mom could have possibly said or done, like, oh, I'm gonna call the police on you, I'm gonna do this, put the law on you, this, that, and the other. It seems to be the easiest way out to avoid the motherfucking uh, problems and shit, but realize you're creating problems for me, your son, by just not not manning up and facing the fucking music or whatever because now I'm 40 years old and you gotta face the music now I mean did you think you were gonna just like dance around this issue all your fucking life come on pops for real dog you know so my main criticism of my dad is that as I came of age like around 17 18 whatever I got married young at I think 19 or whatever um, I never got encouragement from doing my business. I was always told to follow his steps, you know, go to college, get a good, get a degree and get a quote unquote good job, whatever. And I always wanted to go in the path of entrepreneurship, which neither of my parents went into or whatever, right? They don't know a goddamn thing about having a business. Both of them had government jobs, teacher and post office, whatever, right? So, you know what I'm saying? And I do hope he listens to this show. I hope both my parents play these shows and be like, Whatever, son. How dare you put our business like that out of the internet? Whatever. Well, hey, I'm butt fucking naked on the internet. I'm an internet porn star, producer, actor, fucking author, this, that, and the other. All because I didn't have any positive, encouraging direction from either of them in doing this. You know what I'm saying? I just got a program and a script to follow without them thinking that I'm an autonomous person. I never got encouragement for my dreams. I always got shit on for my fucking dreams. You know what I'm saying? When I tell them I'm doing a business, I'm selling this, I'm doing this website, internet shit, it's going to be this next big thing. Total fucking discouragement. And I do not forgive them for that. I never will forgive them for that. So even now to this day, when I get a little bit of positivity or whatever from both moms and pops to a small degree about, oh, you're doing, oh, it looks like you knew what you were talking about, son. You're doing all right for yourself. All I got was jealous fucking haterism from them as a teenager because I had fucking $300,000 a year coming in from my goddamn bedroom, way more than they would make in a fucking decade. And by the time I was 19, I had a million bucks. And, you know, you can't tell me shit. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So the last thing in the world I expect is to get haterism from my parents. But I got that shit. You know what I'm saying? They could do their best to cover their tracks and pretend like they didn't do it. But I don't forget a goddamn thing, right? That's why I do the Chevy show. It helps me. I have issues that I need to resolve. That is why I do these shows and talk about them and try to get feedback from other people that have gone through the same goddamn bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Because I need, I need to talk about this shit just to be functional or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I got nobody else to talk to about this shit. There's a reason why I didn't have guidance in, in, you know, relationship, marriage, this, that, and the other. And probably because they're both failures at fucking relationships and shit anyway. They don't have good social skills. Both my parents, they're just programmed from the fucking 1950s, 60s, 70s. And they don't realize that it's, you know, 40 years later, shit has changed. And they haven't updated or evolved their skill set or whatever. 
you know, th the game has definitely fucking changed, and, uh, you know, it is what it is, it's like, I'm semi-retired once again now, but I realized that my parents could have literally saved me a million dollars in decades of suffering and shit off my life if I had a little bit of professional hand-holding and guidance, that's all they had to do, as Big Smoke says in San Andreas to CJ, all we had to do was follow the damn train, CJ. You know what I'm saying? And I do think it is a father's duty to guide his sons or at least somewhat shape and direct if he has that ability, you know, whatever, 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 you know, I, I, I just don't get it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, further sins of my father, What the real reason I'm doing this show is I don't want him or need him to be a daddy to me right now. I don't need a fucking daddy, right? But I do have two kids that are coming of age. They're currently 15 and turning 18 years old now. And my father has never fucking gone to Canada to visit them. You know what I'm saying? He'll fly to Africa to see his, his own mama. He'll fly to Toronto to see some other girlfriend slash ho slash bitch whatever i fly all around the world myself i'll go i'll go to southeast asia you know what i'm saying i'm in thailand right now I'll, I'll go to the philippines i'll go to thailand i'll go to costa rica i'll go to dominican republic and fuck my little hoes quote unquote as my mama calls them you know what i'm saying but i do still have the nuts to be a man and go see and visit and spend time with my fucking kids and interact with them and guide them and do these goddamn shimmy show podcasts so that they have some semblance of direction a fucking compass in life to guide them and they did not fucking do that to me my father pertained particularly did not do that to me you know what i'm saying now my mom gave try at least she tried to give she tried as they say mama tried she gave me direction at least the best programming she knew how to i guess you know or at least she at least imputed to me what was in her brain whereas my father did not proactively do this or whatever you know what i'm saying my dad my dad's kind of like my take on it is that he grew up rather wealthy he doesn't want to admit or fess up to this, but he grew up in Africa rather wealthy. And I gather this because he doesn't know how to drive a manual transmission <laughs> to this day. His skill set is like lacking. Like he's not a self-made man like me, basically. He's not an entrepreneur. You know, like I say, little shit, you know, little shit adds up in my brain. When I look at older photos of him from the 70s, I see basically a rich black man with a big afro and a gold watch and clean pressed clothes looking like a pimp ass nigga, right? These, I only have a couple of pictures on my Instagram of my dad from the 70s or whatever, but he look he looks like the pretty boy Mac player of the year. And I could imagine in the 70s when my mama seen him, she was like, oh shit, look at who is this exotic, light-skinned African nigga with the big afro and the gold watch. He looked like he got something going on for him, more so than Leroy DeAndre Jackson Hightower III, some big black-ass nigga from the South that's a fucking tow truck driver works a fucking tire changer machine or you know security guard ass nigga you know what kind of jobs they give black men in america you know what i'm saying so my father probably seemed like in my mom's eyes the most logical viable choice and likely she got her heart broken etc cetera, etc cetera, and never like recovered from it or whatever because she hasn't done the internal work to fucking fix herself etc cetera, etc cetera. you know that's basically my take on it right but Again, I'm talking about my dad and why he does not reach out to my own kids. Like, he doesn't want to acknowledge his grandkids or go fucking visit them. Like, what the fuck, nigga? You live near... You, you, there's international airports everywhere. I can fly there for three, four hundred dollars, like, round trip. So there's, there's no excuse, man. You're retired. You're this, that, and the other. You can't tell me it's too cold in Canada because you told me you had a bitch in Toronto or whatever. So you can go and fly and see your own grandkids if you wanted to, man. Or you have the resources or whatever to go and fly them to California from where you're at and whatever. Go buy them a ticket, spend some time with them, give them some guidance and direction or whatever. But you don't want to do that. It's almost like he's embarrassed of them or whatever. Maybe because they're like half white slash Canadian, Ukrainian or something. I think he's actually quite racist because I've never actually seen my father be with a white woman. He has like a black, he has like a churchy black woman fetish right and i'm putting the niggas business in the streets now right now you could be pops if you're listening to this i hope you are you could be mad at me all you want man but 
I think he has a fetish for churchy Christian black women, super, super ultra type of Christian black women. Because that's what my mom is. That's what his previous girlfriend, deceased or whatever, called Bibby or some shit I saw on Google. She was a churchy black woman and he's with another churchy black woman now from the South, from fucking Alabama, no fucking less or whatever. So he likes churchy Baptist church type of black women. That's his personal fetish. That's his flavor. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I currently like Thai pussy, Filipino pussy, Dominican pussy, etc. myself to each his own. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I had a phase where I was, you know, only fucking with white women for a while. That is what it is too. I'm not knocking anybody's sexual whatever preferences for whatever makes their dick hard. Okay, that's not my point of doing this show. I'm not I'm not an individual that's big on shaming and I think people should do whatever the fuck makes them happy. But if you do have kids, I can say this for a fact. If I have grandkids one day from my kids or some other kids I have or whatever, I will go to whatever fucking ends of the globe to see them, especially in their goddamn adolescence when they need the most fucking direction, and especially if they are fucking boys turning into men. Jesus motherfucking Christ, are you retarded, man? You had two fucking African parents. You're like the fucking guy, guy in Coming to America with fucking James Earl Jones and whatever in Zamunda, right? So, you know, I just don't get that shit. It's pretty cold-hearted. I don't, uh, my brain does not compute it. It would be something else if you didn't have the resources or if he was like in prison or some shit or something. But if you have the resources, you have the time, why are you denying being quote unquote grandpa shim you don't get to just flaunt that title around nigga you gotta earn it dog what the actual fuck you know you got their phone number you got their email you got a way to contact them even better you have the time to jump your fucking light-skinned black ass on a motherfucking aluminum tube with wings on it called an airplane and go and see them for a couple fucking days out of the year and you know show them some love it's not about sending money it's not about that. It's about giving them a piece or a part of yourself, man. For Christ's fucking sakes. You're with this new nigger bitch or whatever, or whatever, and you're going to go and see her kid's graduation or whatever. Or maybe they're your kids and you're not telling me the truth, but I don't know. You know, I think that woman he's with now is a little too old to have fucking kids. So she probably has kids from a previous marriage, which is understandable or whatever. But why aren't you seeing your own genetic flesh and blood kids? I'm kind of thinking my dad is actually a super beta male and his new black bitches have like some mind control over him where they, where they don't like him talking about uh, or seeing his his old family from the past, me and them. And that, that just, you know, that, you know, it brings up like all kinds of like birthright issues, this and that. But it makes me seem like the nigga ain't got no nuts, dog. And I've been in that position before because I didn't have any guidance from him and now it all makes sense. That's why I was a quote unquote beta male quote unquote pushover that let a bitch run me over in my marriage or whatever, right? In my 20s or whatever. But I made that mistake in my 20s and I'm not doing it anymore, right? You know what I'm saying? G's up, hose down. If the bitch can't swim, she bound to drizz down. But those kids are your progeny, man. They've got, they literally have your fucking name. Their middle name and last name is Shemelis McBeb, just like me. So how the fuck are you going to go and fuck with this nigger bitch's kids before you go and fuck with your own original kids? <laughs> That's why I called the show Sins of My Father or whatever, this, that, and the other. Fuck, I'm not making no sins myself. You know what I'm saying? I'm spending time with my kids. I'm getting them cars. You know, they've got all my life lessons. I play video games with them. Even after the divorce and through the hellacious marriage or whatever, I'm still there. I'm reachable on tap. I talk to them almost every every other fucking day or whatever. They can hit a button on their goddamn phone or screen and I'm there. Beep, yo, I'm on tap, whatever, you know? Just like, you know what, there, there was actually a... I don't watch TV no more, but when I was a kid, like around 7, 8, 9, 10 years old, right? There was a sitcom, when sitcoms were popular, uh, called Out of This World. Um, it was about this girl named Evie. 
the white girl and she could stop time by touching her two index fingers together that's what the show was based on like and in the show the way it was written her father was an alien he was a fucking space alien but he was able to communicate with her in her bedroom through some like this is like fantasy shit but through some like magical pyramid he could talk telepathy how you say telepath telep i can't say both these syllable words right telepathy used by using telepathy or telepathically there we go uh he could communicate to his daughter through this cube so the daddy he would be in the room in this cube whenever the daughter would have like issues in school or whatever the daughter would go uh um dad what do i do whatever and dad and the dad in the pyramid would go uh well evie you should be doing this and that and the other and i've been watching you from this that and the other and he would give her guidance even though the dad was never actually physically present in the show that's how i feel like i am with my own kids you know what i'm saying they get hit a they get hit a button on their little fucking they got iphones and shit or whatever i don't know why they got expensive fucking phones i got a shitty phone but it's like they get hit a button on their goddamn iphone or whatever and i'm there on tap i'm there on fucking whatsapp instagram twitter goddamn all that I don't do Snapchat or whatever, but there's there's some app or email or Skype or some shit where they they they're in they're in a jam. They, I'm reachable. I can come there if need be. If the shit hit the fan, I can jump on an airplane and be there. You know, whatever. I'll find a way to get there if it is what it is. An emergency, this, that, and the other. I'm not gonna leave niggas hanging, right? I don't feel the same way about my own father. You know what I'm saying? And just just the fact that in the Eight, just from these my, my kids in 15 to 18 years he hasn't taken a conscious effort or a step forward to go and visit them I don't even know how often they might communicate by phone or whatever this that the other probably never right so what the actual fuck man you know growing up I needed a guy to teach me how to drive stick when I got my first car my mom got me a $200 Scirocco um, a couple months after a Volkswagen, after <laughs> after I graduated high school, I, I, I had to get some guys, some, some like thug niggas in the parking lot, had to t- give me a crash course on how to drive stick in 20 minutes around the parking lot or whatever, you know, because I didn't have a dad there. My mom can't drive stick. So it was like when you don't have a dad, you look for surrogates, basically like uncles, older cousins. Um, you know, this is why a lot of kids join street gangs and shit, so they can get guidance from an older nigga that actually has at least experience in how to navigate through life, you know what I'm saying? At least thankfully now, there's goddamn YouTube and shows like this, and maybe I'm actually kind of a father figure for some other guys that are, like, ghost subscribers on the channel. I don't fucking know, you know? I still think I'm a great role model, even though I'm an internet webmaster, pornographer, race car driver, author, shimmy show guy or whatever i am it's better to have some sort of a role model than nothing at all okay when you ain't got nothing at all nigga you're just blindly feeling in the dark and you're gonna get you're gonna stumble and fall and hurt yourself and have to learn everything through painful experiences you know what i'm saying and it's the the pains that i have gone through i don't want my kids to experience that unless they absolutely are hard-headed and have to You know what I'm saying? I don't want them to lose a goddamn million dollars like I did. I don't want for them to work for a decade and this and that and have it all blown away because you were inexperienced in some other areas of your life or relationships. I don't I want them to have the knowledge and insight that I have about girls, women and the nature of things and the nature of life and how to start a business and how to get fit and how to lose weight and how to eat correctly and live longer and prosper basically i didn't get any of that shit my pops never instructed me how to invest in the stock market and this that i had to learn this on my own and through other friends who are doing shit like that or whatever you know what i'm saying all i was taught is hey just go to school and get a job and blah and that ain't i mean my nigga that ain't shit that i mean you're not you're not you're not really assisting me dog that's my criticism of my pops. I'm happy that he's alive. You know, there's a lot of guys out there, their dads are in jail, their dads are locked in a box, they're fucking dead, buried in the ground, or they don't even know who the fuck they are. You know what I'm saying? Or where they are on this planet. I know exactly where my dad is, but for the most part, he's fucking useless. For the very most part. I try to reach out to him still to this day, but it's like it's hurting me every time I do it. I would make a conscious effort at least once a month, and it was hard for me. It still is hard. 
to pick up the phone and give him a call and be, how are you? What's going on, pops? How you doing, old man? You know, he might think I want money or some shit every time I call him. I'm like, nigga, I'm not a hooker. I'm not one of your little stupid black bitches hitting you up for X, Y, and Z. I don't need you to go to the mall and buy me a pack of t-shirts anymore. Like, I don't need that, dog. I'm just calling to see how are you? How are you doing? Et cetera, et cetera. And it's just a weird dynamic. It's like, I feel like we should be closer, but we're not. It's like, I feel like he's fostering some resentment from my mom and holding that towards me and my own goddamn children. And that's like some cold ass shit, yo. Are Ethiopians like this? I don't think so. Because, you know, I, 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 I gather from what he tells me, he's showing love to the new family, this, that, and the other. Which you can, but you can't never deny your original people, dude. Your original blood, your DNA is going through my veins here, for Christ's sakes. Your DNA is in my kids' veins. It's in my fucking nutsack right now, for Christ's sakes. And I think for the fact that he is very shamed and embarrassed by porn and pornography, because in Ethiopia, I think pornography is illegal or whatever, and they're very, like, ultra-Christian and this, that. I can understand that. But you moved to the United States of America, nigga. You know what you were getting into. America is the land of pornography and assault rifles and cheeseburgers and hot dogs and whatever. You knew exactly what the fuck you were getting into, or you could have moved to some other part of Africa or some other... You could have gone anywhere, but you decided to come to the United States of America and join this culture and this economy, and you embraced it. You embraced it. You had a big fucking afro. I got a picture of him on Instagram. Big fucking afro with 300 goddamn cigarettes on a coffee table or whatever in the 70s. Looking like a pimp ass nigga, yo. It is what it is, man. So how can you live in this country for 40 fucking years and not embrace whatever, or at least somewhat become a part of whatever's here? Just because you don't like that I have naked girls or naked ladies or I make movies or I bring shame or embarrassment upon your family name. When you go on Google Shemalese and McBab, you get me. You know what I'm saying? You don't like what you see. That's too fucking bad, nigga. I'm your son. I'm your progeny. Whatever. Eat it. Whatever. If you don't like it. I am who I am. I'm a self-made man, nigga. If you don't like what you see, you should have given me some more direction. You should have given me some hookups or some inroad. You could have hooked me up with a job at the post office or some shit. You, you could have showed me some, you know, introduced me to some Ethiopian girls. You could have took me to fucking Africa and taught me Amharic, for Christ's sakes. How in the fuck do I have an African father who never taught me his native goddamn language? I'm willing to learn. What the fuck? Nigga, you're not going to take me to Africa to see your mom in her house in Ethiopia in Addis? What the actual fuck, nigga? Are you that embarrassed of me? Are you that ashamed of me that I'm naked on the goddamn internet? Is that all this is about? Is that all that this is about? Well, nigga, you need to grow the fuck up. And that's Shimmy from The Shimmy Show. That's the official message from the real Shimmy. You know what I'm saying? The real Shimmy with the big fucking balls. You know what I'm saying? That's the black side of me coming out of me, I guess. But it's like, I thought you loved these so-called black people so much. You love these so-called African Americans and their southern barbecue and hot boiled peanuts and ribs and high blood pressure diabetes ass meals and their Jesus motherfucking Christ nigger preacher fucking sermons. I listen to that shit too. It's entertaining, dog. Don't get me wrong. Don't get it twisted. It's the culture. You know what I'm saying? Black people are athletes, entertainers, preachers, dancers, fucking, you know, they do what they do. <laughs> and that Eddie Murphy saying, you know, there are very musical people in that movie Trading Spaces or whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Niggas are entertaining or whatever, dog. So what are you, what, you know, when you have kids with a black woman, what the fuck? You think we're not going to be athletes, entertainers, whatever? And I'll probably get a little bit of my nerd side from Pops there. But again, I'm a mix. I'm a conglomeration of this, that, and the other. So don't deny me, man. Don't deny the kids, whatever. But it seems like he already did, and it just seems like it's a little too fucking late, man. So that's my criticism of my father there. And they always say that porn stars have, you know, father-daddy issues, mother issues, whatever. Well, both my mom and my dad have issues, but I think my at least my mom makes an effort. She's a goddamn pain in the ass. Most days, she makes a fucking effort to at least reach out and do shit proactively. God damn, nigga. So, you know what I'm saying? That, that, that's, uh, 
this is a really sad show for me to make, man. I'm not, I'm trying, I'm trying to make lighthearted joke or whatever of this shit, but it's like, I've put off making the daddy episode for a really, really long time, basically, because I don't have no fucking data on the nigga. Pops, dude, like, step to the plate, nigga, what, what's going on here, dog? Explain something to me. He never showed me. How is it that he's a landlord, but he's never showed me about landlording or buying property or buying stocks or doing, you know what I'm saying? Like, are you just like expecting me to learn all this shit from the internet, from the quote unquote white man from the university? I'm just like, how in the fuck do you expect me to come up if you don't give me make my business any encouragement, dude? Damn. So it's too late for me. It's Rap City for me. But for the grandkids, dude, it's 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 almost too late. They 18 years old, 15 years old, dog. Come on, man. Like. I don't look like it's going to happen at this point. Looks like my pops has moved on to like they call greener pastures or whatever, I guess. So do what you're going to do, my dog. It is what it is. I ain't mad at you for changing up girls or whatever, but this is about the kids, you know. They say most people's marriages don't last more than a decade anyway or whatever. That was some, uh, not even a, it was a real life quote I heard the other day or whatever, you know. Fuck, you know, this is a guy, guy from... Uh, EU or whatever, Netherlands, whatever, it was telling me, like, yeah, in Netherlands, you know, it's common that they, they people trade their husbands and wives every 10 years. That's why they only have typically, like, 10-year mortgages and shit over there, because it's like, America's just a scam, you know, 30-year notes and shit like that. So that's another side story, but that is something, man. So my question out there for you guys in the comment section, this is, this is a real rare one here. If there are any half Ethiopian, half black American people out there on the internet, please write something in the comment section below. Tell me where you are. Tell me your story. Tell me how your parents relate to you, this, that, and the other. If you have one parent from Ethiopia and the other one is black American or any other kind of American for that matter or whatever. Because typically I know that most Africans don't associate with black people. And for good reason. You know what I'm saying? It's oil and water. Like black people are like, they want to, black Americans particularly, they want to rob and exploit and use people who are not black fucking darkies just like them. You know what I'm saying? If your name is not John Hightower, Culpepper, DeAndre fucking the third Shaniqua Jackson or some shit like that. If your name is Shimalisa McBeb or something foreign, oh, fuck, man. These niggas are going to fucking exploit you, rob you, use you every which way from Sunday because they don't see enough of their own DNA genome in you. They don't see enough slave nigger in you, basically. That's what the problem is, you know what I'm saying? So I think that's why most Africans avoid African Americans, you know? If you look at most Africans, and my father included even, he doesn't dress like a black man. He doesn't wear black people clothing. He dresses like a real fucking African from Africa, meaning always long pants, a vest, you know, gentleman dressed, collared shirt, et cetera, et cetera. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Excuse me. If you look at, I look at often a lot of the Africans that come here to Thailand or whatever, <clears throat> They do the same shit. They, they, they dress kind of preppy, Carlton-like, you know, mostly the Nigerians and shit. They'll, they'll, they'll be black as tar, black as fuck, black as Manute Bowl with Dorian A. Peters, California Bar ID 261863, black as this nigga, right? But they'll still go and put on glasses and try to clean up and look like slightly dignified. They'll get a suit even if it's from the thrift store that don't match, oversized, cuffs all fucked up, don't fit their body right. But they, the last thing they're going to do is go and wear some FUBU, Fat Farm, Cross Colors, Carl Kanai, black people, urban Kanye West ass clothing, sagging jeans and all that shit. Africans want, do not want to look like African Americans or even be associated with them, right? So you can imagine the weird boat that I'm in when I'm half and half of both, right? You know, the black people criticize me. Oh, he's not black enough. He's not this. What's up with his name? Why are his eyes so wide apart? Why is their arms and legs so hairy? Why is his hair not as Kunta Kente Brillo pad fucking nappy? Why is it curly and soft like a fucking Semitic Jew? Because that's what I am, you stupid niggers, right? So, you know, I've, I've, got, I've got that hurdled across as being a hybridized person. But by being a hybridized monkey slash gorilla, basically... 
it has opened up avenues with other race, other mixed races of people that I otherwise would have been rejected by. Mixed races of people meaning specifically Dominicans who are mixed basically like black Taino Indian and Spanish from Spain, this, that, and the other. Hybridized people basically are beautiful people. If you are pure, pure black, black slave from West Africa, Congo, like my black side of the family originates actually from Senegal or whatever, that, that's, that's their slave ship origins or whatever. We had some, uh, an uncle or something of mine go and do research our roots or whatever. So if you go to Senegal, most of the people there will look like my black side of the family in the South and in Cali or whatever. So that's where they're from or whatever, right? Those are their roots, even though none of them ever want to go to Africa or talk about Africa or this, that, and the other. Black people are so brainwashed, they think they fell from the goddamn sky and landed in America. You know what I'm saying? With, the, with all the slave master names, this, that, and the other, and it's the goddamn truth. Like, no, you niggas are from Senegal. You're from West Africa, and West Africa is far away from East fucking North Africa, where Ethiopia is. So, for you guys out there who call me, oh, Shemi's black, he's a black guy, I'm like, mmm, sort of, kind of, but not really, um, yeah, yeah, there's just... How many black Americans are long distance runners? Most black Americans can't run to the fucking corner. Now, they could specialize in the hundred yard dash and they could go and lift some heavy shit. They could lift a refrigerator, put it on their back, whatever. Um, I can't do these things. <laughs> okay. My strength is in other areas or whatever like that. So it is what it is. Anyway, sidetracking here. Sins of my father. I wish my dad would step to the plate when it comes to the grandkids. I really wish he would. But, I mean, like, the last time that I talked to him, like I was saying, I got to force myself to call him, like, once a month. I got to force it. It's difficult. Last time I called him up, man, homeboy was like, um, no, no, what had actually happened, the phone had rang. Because I had called him the previous week or whatever, right? So my phone had rang, and it was him calling me. Like, my dad never, ever, ever fucking calls me, right? So he calls me, and I'm all, like, excited. I literally got my fucking hopes up. I'm a 40-year-old fucking single dad, half-black Ethiopian guy. Like, oh my God, my dad's calling? What the fuck? Somebody either must be dead or it's, something's going on. But I'm kind of excited just to hear from him when I saw his name on the caller ID. So I pick up the fucking phone. Man, this nigga is like, oh, so in his, in his African voice. Oh, son, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call you. I was like, nigga, what? That was like one of the coldest things I ever fucking heard from my pops. It literally broke my heart. What little pieces I have left of it. Like, you don't say that kind of shit to your son. Your supposed only son, right? You know? What the actual fuck, man? Weird, dog. So anyway, one of the reasons I wanted to have two or more kids is because I grew up as an only child. You know, I never had anybody to play with other than my own little cousins and nephews and nieces and shit. Or whatever, but um, you know, I, I never had a sister or brother, and don't know what that experience is like. So, I had to have more than one kid. You know, I got it. I have two sons right now. I hope to have more. You know, all that cool shit. But it really kind of sucks growing up as an only child, man. Not having nobody to play with. I remember playing all my little video games, one player. This. I have a lot of time for isolation. A lot of time for reading. A lot of time for my Asperger's to act up or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So I know what it's like to be alone and live in isolation. I've been doing it all my goddamn life and I'm doing it right now. But I, I would often wish I had a bigger brother or a younger brother or sister growing up because it's really fucking lonely as a kid when you don't have nobody to talk to or nobody to listen to. You know, it's that that's really fucking sad, actually. So I didn't want my... Uh, kids to go through that you gotta have you gotta have more than one it's like if you have any kind of a pet you know get two or three of the motherfuckers at least because th people do need social interaction with someone around their age or peer group you know what i'm saying it's not healthy to not have that in my personal opinion even though you know research suggests only childs are you know typically they, they thrive and this and that probably because they don't have nothing else to better fucking do what are we going to do, twiddle our thumbs? 
How many times am I going to play Nintendo games on one player or whatever? How many times am I going to play Solitaire? How many times am I going to just sit in a corner and have to fucking entertain myself with a box of goddamn Legos because I don't have a brother or a sister? You know what I'm saying? I wish, even if my parents' marriage would not have worked out, I wish I would have still had a brother or sister growing up. I still wish I had that to this day, but I don't. So all I can do is have and make more kids, I suppose. And that is what it is, you know. Parents don't ever consider. It's very selfish if you, if you know, if you consider having kids to only have one kid. I'll say, I really believe that, man. It, it's kind of like a curse, a punishment, whatever. If you're fortunate enough in this world to have a sister or a brother, you know, you're, you're really fortunate. You're really blessed, whether you know it or not, man. For real. Because the only child shit ain't really what it's cracked up to be. Not all the time, at least. It definitely gives you a lot of time for personal growth, and to this day, I know I'm very good at entertaining myself. Why am I doing a Why am I doing a blog podcast talking on my goddamn telephone? And it's really what's really trippy too is all Eastern people, Africans, etc. They have huge motherfucking families. Every time I meet a Thai girl, Filipino girl, this, that, and the other, they got seven, eight brothers and sisters. God damn, I got none. I feel cheated and ripped off. It's crazy, man. You know? It's not a positive thing, in my personal opinion. To grow up having, just talking to yourself all the goddamn time and shit. So, you know, I wish my folks could have had more kids. I I wish, by the sound of the thing, it sounds like my mom was just being kind of like feminist, femdom bitchy or whatever. And she wanted to give them the boot because she thought she could do it all on her own because... She had some fucking white Jewish feminist women from California, some bra-burning bitches from the 70s, some pussy-licking fucking lesbian dykes telling her she don't need no goddamn man. And that's the era they grew up in that black women pretty much swallowed, you know, hook, line, and sinker, whatever. So, you know, that's the system. That's the American system, American way of life or whatever. You know, I just think a lot of women want to get married, but they don't want to be wives. They don't, they don't want to literally take on the wife role, you know, a lot of husbands don't want to take on the husband role, you know, in my personal case, I did the, you can't say I didn't try to be a provider. Niggas can look at my history, blame me all you want. I stuck it out, thugged it out for seven fucking years, spent millions of dollars, did everything I could to make that shit stay afloat to my own goddamn detriment because I cared about my kids and that was the leverage that was motherfucking used against me by my bitch-ass ex-wife from Canada. You know what I'm saying? Some punk shit to manipulate a man with this weakness, you know? But if I had the guidance, the proper guidance from a father, you know, the shit wouldn't have happened. I wouldn't have been played like that. So that's the detriment. That's, that's why my life is the way it is now. Never thought about that? God damn it. Sins of my fathers. Sins of my parents. Whatever. But this is the daddy episode. I'm Shemmy from the Shemmy Show. I'm dragging this on too long. Almost fucking an hour. I'm sorry, people. But uh, that's my story about my own pops. You know, Shemelise McBeb Sr. You know, you're my pops. Thanks for giving me the gift of life. Thanks for fucking my mom, etc. Thank you, mom, for giving birth to me and not feeding me to the goddamn ants, as I was told growing up. Like, who tells their kids these things? You know what I'm saying? I understand your bitterness and hatred, but grow the fuck up, people. Grow the motherfucking fuck up. Life goes on. People fuck other people. God damn it. Fuck. Shit pisses me off to no end. You know what I'm saying? To no fucking end. Ugh. Anyway, people, thank you for listening to me rant. Fuck. Good night, good morning, whatever. Sawadi ka, assalamu alaikum, fucking arigato, all that shit. Gracias. Shimmy signing out. Peace out. Peace and hair grease. Buy my movies, want your money, honey. I'm out of here. Leave comments below in the section below if you got something to talk about. I'm usually reachable. Peace.